All right, welcome back to Black Acre Ranch, everybody. If you notice right behind me, the trusses are a lot smaller than what they used to. That's because we've been working on some stuff. If anything's going, we've been coming at odd times during the days and weekends and whatever else. And you can see behind me, we made some progress. I'm gonna go over the trusses and uh, we're gonna try and get some of that on film today if the wind doesn't go crazy. So stick with us as we continue on. All right, guys, as you know, we've been building this house from scratch. We're doing it ourselves, DIY. We're kind of doing all the framing, all the trusses. We're gonna do all the sheetrock, the electrical. May have a little bit of help with some plumbing because I just don't want to jackhammer out some concrete. But other than that, um, oh, and uh, maybe some insulation, AC work, I don't know. We may do that too. So this is the garage. This is where we've been. You've seen this in the last video. What you haven't seen is the house. Now the house, is 29 and 11 inches pretty much 29 feet so the 30 foot trusses up there these were 24 foot trusses anyway this is our 12 foot ceiling area this is what we got up when we started doing this last weekend we've been trying to come back every night and get us some stuff done um and we're slowly making progress this last weekend, we got all the trusses all the way up. We got half of them to right here. And then so far we've been doing that. And today we're gonna get another five or six. So these trusses are actually uh, 170 pounds. And they're uh, about 40 pounds heavier than what the garage was. These things do slide pretty well. They've been hunkered down with some of this strapping. And we just keep breaking them off as we keep coming down lower and lower in the pile. And I think all that we have left is nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 14. <laughs> so optimistic. I cannot do this without Grant. Grant has to be here because he is the other end. Yes, there he is. He's the other end of that truss. Trusses are very wobbly. And so they're very good when they're on end, but they're not very good when they're on their sides. So how we're doing this is we're just picking them up with a point end going down and we're walking them in and we're kind of coming through here. And then he sets his side up on his side. I set my side up on my side. And then Clark comes over and he grabs the top and he flips it up. You've seen this done many, many places. When we were doing those garage trusses, it was kind of, once you get about halfway up, it starts to sag. You kind of hear it sometimes, kind of stressing over its weight because it doesn't like those side-to-side -side forces, but that wasn't too bad until we started getting these guys and this, man, we were afraid about this. So we made a little jig. Anyway, this is our little uh, brace jig. And uh, it looks like Frankenstein style, but when we roll it over, you'll see it used here in a little bit. It just lays on top of that and then we can finish rolling it over and everything works well. It's not pretty, but it's functional. Anything that it takes to keep this thing from uh, cracking and splitting. So we've got a few extra boards here for further bracing and other things like that, but it's about time to get started and keep going on some of this. And uh, I think that's what we're gonna do right now. So let's get back to work. Actually, before I begin, I do wanna express kind of how we've been attaching these things. We've been using these H1A Hurricane tie downs. And so as we've been going through, we've been trying to tie those down. The sucky part is like we just saw with the garage that I had to deal with was these gang nails on the sides are just a beast. And we're having to put these things up right where all those gang nails go. This is one where we haven't done it because we're right next to the wall, but you can see where the location of these gang nails are, it's just killer. So sometimes we can only get one on the sides or maybe two, so three of the four, stuff like that. So I'm gonna have to come back with a screw, uh, what do you ever call it, drill bit, and maybe just go through the metal. We just need a little bit of area. And sometimes those holes on those H1A hurricane ties don't match up with the slots inside those gang nails and we just can't get them in. So I'll have to come back and pre-drill some of those so we can get a little bit of bite on these screws. When we first started doing this, we started using the screws in these things. 
as you can see those on these guys but then after a while we switched to the nails and so you can use two different types you can use galvanized one and a half inch screws that kind of come with it um you can go find the boxes are pretty standard and screw them in the problem with using those on these front face of the walls is when you sheetrock so when you sheetrock you got to go over this bolt screw heads and it's more frustrating that way so i had priced out should i do screws should i do nails i thought well maybe nails anyway it wasn't until i got three of them in that i was remembering oh crap we're supposed to be using nails so um at least on the front face of the wall we're doing nails and then we've been screwing up top you can nail through that metal gang nail but it's a beast and it's hard and they have a, a tang here i can go over and get one they have a flange and trying to nail into that with a hammer gets a little difficult so it makes it a struggle the other thing i struggle with that grant doesn't is that the spacing in here is just enough for a two by four but not a two by four with gang nails so he wiggles his to kind of flare out this end to make it wider so we can fit it on and then we have to beat it on with a hammer so we're going to change our approach today we are trying to speed things up we we're able to like on a situation like this we're going to get the h2a i think it is the one that does like an s twist because we can't get both sides of the board so we had to nail those with a nail gun and you know that didn't go too bad so i think what we might do is speed this up we're gonna put them up and just bam 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 bam, bam with the gun and um come back with those clips and get everything else set up at a later date we can do those easy enough during the day, weekdays and other things like that with the other kids so anyway weather is rip roaring the wind is blowing pretty darn good it always makes me a little nervous and it's always a little bit windier up top so Let's see if we can get cracking on some of this stuff before it gets too late in the day. I think, Bug, you just want to be up there. No. I don't know that you're going to do anything.
So we've been averaging out how we're how fast we're doing this and it's been taking about 15 minutes right Grant? Like about 15 minutes maybe 20 kind of you know whatever we're just doing the nails real quick on the sides we got that down to six minutes a lot faster so hopefully we can get a lot of these things going up Woohoo! Six inches, okay.
All right, guys, fun time. So we got ourselves a little dilemma as we're about to wrap up everything. This truss landed right on the wall, which isn't bad, but it's wanting to pull up and all the way down at the other end, it's coming off and it's about what, an inch and a half off? Yeah. So our concrete is, you know, like 40, 50 years old. So it, it's maybe not in perfect shape. So we are actually figuring out what we're gonna do here. And that's, you can kind of get a perspective, my fat chubby sausages, but that's about an inch and a half out to there. Either the concrete's not level or there's a, a bow in the trusses, something along those, whatever. So what we're actually gonna do is when you look at the plans, the distance of our actual um, house length, they wanted us to put at the far end like a one foot 10 inches gap instead of the 24 inch on center. And then at the other end do the same thing, but it had us put in the middle a one foot one inch gap between two of the trusses. Now I have ignored that. I just didn't bother doing that. So we are actually gonna take that, use that to our advantage. We're gonna shift this truss. Instead of the mark being here, we're gonna move over two inches and put it on the other side of the wall. Then we'll start coming back over here all the way to the end. We have six trusses and we're under 13 feet um, remaining. So we've got another almost two to go. So there's plenty of room to do this. We just gotta fudge it a little bit. And then this is where we're gonna take that extra short gap here to alleviate the problem. Anyway, I hope that made sense. So we're wrapping up right now. We'll be back actually in a blink of an eye to do this tomorrow or the couple days later, something like that. Move this truss and go from there. All right guys, wind is killer. Fighting the wind, we decided to put everything else up. It's been the next couple days later. We got all the trusses up. Um, it was a little interesting. Not too bad. There's a couple parts that were probably a little off, but that's okay. We'll fix that. We'll scab stuff on as needed. But all the trusses are up. You can kind of see them going. And we're all done. So we would have shown you some other footage on that, but with the wind being the way it is, we had to take pauses and wait for gusts. That one little area we did cut off the nails that I had put on there and slid it over like we talked about on the video. So everything is all set there. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna wrap the video up here. Sorry about not getting more footage, but not today. So anyway, hope you guys enjoy yourselves. Catch you next time at Blackacre, bye.